Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Sri Lanka is bankrupt, with the government declaring insolvency in May. The country owes creditors abroad more than $50 billion, and because it can no longer pay for all the imports it needs, it is suffering through shortage of fuel, food, and medicines. What Sri Lanka does have in abundance, however, are the many white elephants, as they call the outsized construction projects that are neither economically productive nor necessary. Many were designed by Chinese companies, built by Chinese workers, flown in, and above all, financed with Chinese loans, money from the Silk Road project. Chinese leader Xi Jinping is hoping to create a new markets for China's construction industry and establish his legacy with the new Silk Road project. But he has bitten off more than he can chew. Debts are mounting. In 2013, Xi Jinping presented his vision of a new Silk Road for the first time. According to the propaganda, the whole world stands to benefit. New streets, new ports, and new communications networks. And as a result, more trade and prosperity. Officially, the program is called One Belt, One Road, or referred to as the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. In May 2017, the Chinese leadership hosted the official launch event, the Belt and the Road Forum in Beijing. Authorities condoned off large parts of the city center as representatives from 130 countries gathered at the National Convention Center. It was said that China intend to invest $1 trillion around the world. In his speech, Xi painted an image of a connected world. Afterwards, state guests sung their praises for the Chinese. President Xi deserves thanks for his initiative, which is very promising and timely, Russia's Putin said. And the Turkey's elder one even described it as an initiative that will put an end to terrorism. In truth, the initiative serves to absorb the oversupply of construction sector and to salvage the Chinese economy. The Beijing's growth model reaches its limit years ago, and to ensure that economic growth increases year after year, the state itself invests in roads, new airports, high-speed rail network. The result is a significant mountain of debt. The national railway alone has accumulated debts of almost $1 trillion. One important aim of the new Silk Road is to create additional markets for Chinese corporations. According to a survey by the American Enterprise Institute, there were a number of projects underway by the end of 2021. Total value? $838 billion. The trillion dollar figure targeted by Xi isn't far off. But numerous loans are at risk of default. A study by the analyst firm Rhodium Group estimates the total value of Chinese foreign loans that need to be renegotiated in 2020 and 2021 were $52 billion. There have also been several reports about bridge loans that Chinese banks have granted to prevent payment defaults. Such emergency loans have been granted to Pakistan, Belarus, Mongolia, Argentina, and Sri Lanka. For CCP leadership, the timing is bad. The strict zero COVID policy is weighing heavily on China's economy, and Xi is hoping to expand his power even further at the upcoming 20th Party Congress this fall. In such a politically sensitive phase, negative economic news is even more unwelcome than usual, especially given that domestic debt is also becoming a problem. The real estate market is currently experiencing a severe crisis, and many construction companies are in the red. Thousands of Chinese are refusing to pay their monthly installments for apartments still under construction out of fear that the real estate companies will declare bankruptcy before the buildings are completed. Out of Sri Lanka's total foreign debt, between 10 and 20% owes to Chinese banks. 
These loans are not the only reason for the country's crisis, which is largely homemade. Yet, the loans still play a significant role in Sri Lanka's plight. The reason is that Chinese contracts differ considerably from those that the country has concluded with, like Japan or the World Bank. Last year, researchers at the Kiel Institute for the World Economy in Germany obtained and evaluated the secret BRI contracts from 24 countries. The conclusion? China's practices make it difficult for countries that are in financial distress to get their debt situation under control. Such is the case in Sri Lanka. Those who have seen the books are shocked by the terms the Sri Lanka government has accepted. In some cases, the interest rates agreed to were twice as high as the market rate. In other cases, experts had advised against the construction, but the buildings went ahead anyway. The best example is perhaps Matala International Airport. The airport is located in Hambang Tota, a district of around 600,000 people and a sizable population of wild elephants. Unfortunately, the wild elephants have a habit of tramping the fence surrounding the tarmac. Often there is only one flight a day from the capital. It is more like a ghost airport and it became a pot warehouse to store rice. China built not just the airport but also a cricket stadium with a capacity of 35,000 spectators, a huge convention center and a container port that China leased for 99 years in 2017. In return, Sri Lanka received $1.1 billion in fresh foreign exchange reserves. The port of Hambantongta has been the subject of an international debate in recent years. The term debt trap diplomacy has made the rounds, referring to a practice in which China showers recipient countries with loans and acquires strategically important infrastructure as soon as the debtors slip into default. What if other recipients countries like Laos, Pakistan, Argentina or Egypt also slip into insolvency? These countries first suffered from the pandemic and now they are being hit by the price shock for oil and food caused by the war in Ukraine. Debt haircuts would be a hard sell domestically in China. The new Silk Road is Xi's legacy. It has become part of the Communist Party creed and has been enshrined in the party constitution since 2017. Also, the Chinese population isn't particularly understanding when large sums of money are forgiven abroad. One year after the big BRI summit, Xi invited African leaders to Beijing for the China-Africa summit in September 2018. Nearly 50 leaders traveled to the event when she announced $60 billion in Chinese economic aid. The internet censors could barely keep up with deleting angry comments. The general tone, why is the government distributing money abroad rather than giving it to the Chinese? But the biggest test case is likely yet to come in Pakistan. Chinese companies are building a $62 billion corridor to connect China's west with the Arabian Sea. The project is considered the crown jewel of the Silk Road Initiative and would allow China to expand its influence in South Asia in the immediate vicinity of its rival India, at least in theory. In reality, many construction projects are now lying idle. Furthermore, two children were killed in a suicide attack aimed at Chinese workers in the port city of Guada last year. Not only does Pakistan struggle with terrorism, but it is also an impoverished country that has been on the verge of national bankruptcy. The country's foreign currency reserves have also hit dangerous lows recently. In July, the International Monetary Fund approved a $1.2 billion rescue fund. One month earlier, money flowed in from China, a new $2.3 billion loan to prevent or at least postpone the next crisis, a much larger crisis in its immediate neighborhood. Indeed, the debt trap. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here.
I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.